To understand what's happening inside atoms, we use the spectra of gases. Now suppose we have a gas contained in some glass container, and if we pass um, an electric discharge through there, or we heat it to a high temperature, or we put a current through it uh, at low pressure, it emits light. If I put a barrier in front with a single little slit, it will emit a single little slit of light. We then pass it through a prism where it is separated into its colors. And what happens is each gas has a unique spectrum, and this can be used as a fingerprint for identification. Each gas has a unique set of bright lines on the screen. So why only certain colors? All the science at the time says that a charge that's accelerating emits light, and the electrons circling the nucleus should continuously give off light and lose energy, and the atom should collapse. Well, why doesn't this happen? Well, Bohr said, here are my two assumptions. First of all, I'm going to say there are orbits where the electron can revolve without giving off energy and the electron has to be in one of these in that particular place, nowhere in between, it will not give off energy. Next, he said, the electron will return to the lowest energy as soon as possible, and when it does, it will emit a photon of energy. Bohr was able to calculate the energy levels for the hydrogen atom, and he found it was En, where N is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, equals negative 13.6 electron volts over N squared. So E1 is negative 13.6 electron volts. That's the ground state. And E2, well, I put 13.6 uh, over 2 squared, uh, divide by 4 in other words, and I get negative 3.4. In other words, I have to go from negative up to zero, which will be at infinity, and uh, to remove the electron. And here, uh, E3 would be divided by 9, you get negative 1.5 electron volts. They draw these as lines as shown, and this represents the energy levels in a hydrogen atom. So here are the energy levels. Uh, E1 is the ground state. It goes all the way up to E infinity, uh, and that would be chosen as the zero level. And at that level, the in electron is infinitely far away from the nucleus, and everything is compared to that. So E1 is the ground state. And this is the closest to the nucleus, and it's where the um, electron wants to be. And it can be excited into any one of these states, Let's suppose that it was uh, taken to the E4. Well, it can fall down to E3. It can now fall to E2. It can fall to E1. And each time it moves from one energy level to the other, it will emit a photon of light, HF. Now, let's suppose it fell from E4 to E1. I can calculate how much energy is there because I know HF equals... E4 is negative 0 0.85 electron volts. And then you always say minus, and then minus the one it's going to, 13.6. Uh, so it's uh, EI minus EF in this case. And <clears throat> I have HF is that amount of energy right there when I work that out. I can also do it as HC over lambda. And if I want to find the wavelength of light emitted, now you understand that this is explaining what's happening on that spectra. And here in this ground state, again, this is a negative 13.6 for hydrogen. And if I add 13.6 electron volts, I, um, the electron is gone. It's free. And this atom then is ionized. Now let's take a look at a, a sample problem, and I think this will be clear. Uh, here's the question. We want an electron to drop from n equals 5 to n equals 2. Well, I know how to calculate the energy of each level. And in this case, it's negative 13.6 electron volts over n squared. Now, 
This is for hydrogen. On the exam, they may give you an imaginary atom. They'll tell you what the energy levels are. You may not even have to calculate them. Well, in this case, E5 then, I work it out, it's going to be divided by 25, and it becomes negative 0.544 electron volts. Can't fit it in there. And E2 is the first excited state, past the ground state, and it will be divided by 4, which is then negative 3.4 electron volts. Now, they want me to find the wavelength. So it's HC over lambda. And that will equal the difference in energy. And so it's E5 minus E2, which is negative 0.544 electron volts, minus, minus 3.4. And um, I can now solve for lambda. Now that quantity H times C is actually given as a constant on the AP physics um, constant sheet. And so you can just look it up, or work it out if you want to. But lambda then is equal to HC, which to three significant figures will be 1, 2, 4, 0. Oh. Now look at the units, electron volt nanometers. That's the constant that is given. And um, you divide by then the, the, that energy difference right there between those levels, which will be 2.856 electron volts. Electron volts cancels. And I'm left with the wavelength, and there it is, in nanometers, that's my unit that's left, 434 uh, nanometers. Now you should work this out and study the example, and you'll find many questions exactly like this one.